In 1979 in Alaska, a pilot calls his base to inform them he saw something strange in the sky and the technicians discover their sensors going crazy. Meanwhile in the forest, two lumberjacks are done working and ready to go home. As they drive away, suddenly one of the trucks floats up for a few seconds only to then drop to the ground, crashing in the process. The other lumberjack tries to check on his friend, but at that moment he's shocked to see an alien spaceship appearing above him. He immediately runs into the forest to try to escape, but soon the aliens catch up to him and beam him up to kidnap him. On present day in California, computer engineer Isaac arrives at the offices of NASA where he works. His co-worker Beck informs him that they're getting a signal from Canada, which is strange because there's no grounded satellite in that area. Later while Isaac is at the computer, he receives a signal from an unknown origin and wonders if it's a glitch. The next day Isaac goes to his appointment with his psychotherapist, who asks him to start recording video diaries to help with the process of self-healing. Isaac feels rather awkward on camera but does his best to record whatever comes to mind. One afternoon, everyone in California stares in surprise as a burning meteorite enters Earth's atmosphere. Isaac is hiking in the mountains with his camera when it happens, so he sneaks around to avoid the incoming law enforcement and finds the perfect spot to record. To his shock, he discovers that the meteorite is actually an actual alien spaceship that landed on the mountains. Suddenly the ship disappears from sight, only for an alien to then appear behind Isaac. When he turns around, he can't believe what he sees yet he still keeps recording. The alien walks away and Isaac tries to follow it, but after a few steps he falls unconscious. Soon every media outlet is discussing the meteorite and random theories about it. Isaac's work team is supposed to collect samples, but he doesn't show up to work. Sometime later, Isaac wakes up on a cliff, confused about what happened. He checks his camera and sees the recording of the alien, making him realize he may have been abducted. There's also some pain on his arm, but it doesn't look hurt. Isaac makes his way back to his apartment, but things keep getting more confusing. When he stares too long at an object, it suddenly disappears only to come back in a few seconds. At first he thinks it was a trick of his brain, but it keeps happening, and when he tries to touch the area where the object was, he can feel a funny sensation around his hand. Thinking he may be sick, Isaac goes to the hospital, but the doctor just says he's dehydrated and that he needs some rest. However the doctor is confused by the x-rays of Isaac's arm because there's a thin fracture so perfectly straight that shouldn't be possible without a tool, yet Isaac has no scar on his skin. Afterward Isaac goes to work and Beck calls him out for disappearing without a word, revealing Isaac has been missing for three days. Instead of explaining what happened, Isaac decides to show it, so he grabs a glass and concentrates to make it disappear. Unfortunately Beck isn't impressed and he just grabs the glass because he can still see it. Then Isaac shows Beck the recording of the alien, but Beck isn't sure if believing it's real. Another co-worker comes in and brings samples from the soil where the incident happened, but there's no evidence at all of a meteorite. Later Isaac decides to post the video online and send it to a few scientific magazines. The video immediately goes viral, and in the morning, Isaac wakes up to thousands of comments and calls from people who want to interview him, including a famous talk show. When he checks the comments on the video, he sees many people believe it but most viewers think it's fake and write horrible things. Soon Isaac appears on TV and shares his story. At first the host asks for details, but soon she shows her true intentions and starts questioning his credibility, making him look like a joke in front of the camera. The interview also goes viral and Isaac is accused of being an attention seeker, there's even a troll who claims to have helped Isaac fake the video. The public reaction really bums him out, but Isaac refuses to give up and begins searching the internet for people who have the same experience as him. One day a person who was also abducted agrees to meet at a restaurant, and while Isaac waits, he starts seeing objects around him floating in the air. His weird experience is suddenly interrupted by Sarah, the person he met online. Isaac shows her the footage and pulls out a bunch of research, showing how aliens have been seen many times throughout history even by famous scientists. In return, Sarah tells him about an alien abduction in 1979 in Alaska. The victim had been a guy named Carl, who disappeared after sharing his story. Meanwhile in a secret cabin in the woods, Carl gets excited when he sees his equipment pick up a strange signal. Sometime later, Isaac sees on TV a guy that keeps criticizing his video, saying how fake it is. This inspires him to start making copies of his footage to send to a bunch of media outlets. Once he has all the envelopes ready, he tries to put them in a mailbox and struggles with the pile. A random man passing by offers his help and recognizes Isaac's face, so he reveals he's a writer and gives Isaac his card, saying to get in contact with him if he wants to get an interview published. Soon more scientists appear on TV saying the footage is fake, so Isaac gets in contact with the writer and gets an appointment at his office. To add legitimacy to the story, the writer asks Isaac to have a lie detector test, during which a bunch of questions are asked about Isaac himself and the incident. All of Isaac's answers are flawless, so the writer asks him to wait a moment and leaves the room. Seconds later, two mysterious agents show up and try to kidnap him. Isaac struggles against them and manages to run away, only to suddenly be shot with a tranquilizer and captured anyway. When Isaac finally wakes up, he finds himself in a mysterious facility and being carried by androids. As they move around, 
Isaac notices they have Sarah as well and yells for her, but they take them to different rooms. The androids tie Isaac to a chair and behind a glass agent Graves appears, saying that Isaac has some valuable information that could help mankind. Then he runs some tests by making Isaac stare at different objects, but no matter what object they choose, nothing happens. Graves also keeps asking about Carl, who supposedly is hiding in British Columbia. Isaac knows nothing about that guy, causing Graves to get more frustrated by the second. After some struggle, Isaac manages to loosen his hands from the bindings. Then he breaks the equipment and uses it to destroy the androids, which begin expelling a weird glowing liquid. Isaac runs out, quickly finding Sarah in the next room. He uses his power to open the door and immediately frees her so they can run away together, taking random hallways as they try to outspeed their pursuers. Isaac takes a gun from the androids he destroyed and shoots back as they run. After a few more turns, Isaac uses his power to open another door and lock it behind them, allowing the duo to safely reach the outside. At that moment they see a person with a cart pass by and they realize they aren't in the USA. Inside the facility, Graves orders the androids to find and capture the duo, theorizing they'll be going to British Columbia to find Carl. After running for a while, Isaac and Sarah manage to reach a town and discover they're in Costa Rica. They agree they should look for this Carl guy but they have no way to reach him, so they ask around for an internet connection. A girl at a bar gives them directions to meet Zed, the local hacker. While the duo asks for his help, Graves' people ask around town for them. Soon the androids are getting closer, but thankfully the group sees them coming and run away just in time. Zed takes them to his treehouse in the jungle, where he reveals some important information. The agents that are following them are from the ISRP or International Space Research Program, which is run by the United Nation Agency. Zed agrees to help them look for Carl, who it's said to have an untraceable connection at his place. While Zed works on tracking Carl down, Sarah tells Isaac about her alien abduction experience. She had heard a noise outside and thought it was a plane, but it was the spaceship that kidnapped her. Sarah was missing for two days and nobody believed her either when she told others, so the duo bonds over their shared trauma and how lonely they feel in a world that mocks them. Moments later, Zed announces he's failing to make any progress. Isaac mentions British Columbia and suddenly remembers the Canadian signal he picked up at work, giving Zed the details. By hacking into Isaac's work computer, they finally find Carl's location, who is indeed in Canada. The group attempts to call the man, but Carl hangs up as soon as he hears their voices. However they don't give up and try again, and this time they get Carl's attention by mentioning Isaac's abduction story and the agents. Isaac explains that he has received a signal from an unknown origin and sends it to Carl, who quickly decrypts it and concludes that the aliens will come to his place in five days. After some discussion over the potential dangers, the group agrees to join Carl. It's quite a long trip, so they take multiple types of transport to make their way there. While they travel, the agents keep on chasing them because both Isaac and Sarah were injected with trackers while they were unconscious. When the trio gets on a train, the androids follow on their bikes and soon come aboard too. Zed sees them on his computer, so the team puts on wacky masks to trick their sensors. Unfortunately the trick doesn't work and the androids try to capture them, thus the trio starts running away as they dodge the shots from the laser guns. Isaac and Sarah climb on the roof of the train and when the androids read their location they try to follow them, but Zed is waiting for them and kicks them off the train. Eventually they finally make it to the right cabin, where Carl meets them at gunpoint. After checking their identities, Carl uses a little device to deactivate the trackers on Isaac and Sarah's arms. Graves immediately notices the lost signals, but his men are already working on tracking down the cars the trio traveled in. Once the team has settled down, Carl confirms that he was the lumberjack who got abducted in Alaska. Since then he's been decrypting any strange audio signals he could detect, translating them into English to try to communicate with the aliens. The signal that Isaac discovered is the most precise one he's found so far. Zed is very impressed because Carl has invented many machines to keep up with this project through the years. That night, Sarah can't sleep because she's afraid, so Isaac comforts her and says he's glad to have met her. Two days later, the group sits in the cabin waiting for a sign of the aliens' arrival. Suddenly they feel a tremor in the area, so Isaac goes to the forest to look for the ship and encounters two aliens. The creatures cooperate and go with him to the cabin, where Carl's device translates for both sides so they can chat. The aliens explain that their race has conquered every aspect of the physical world, from medicine to technology, so now they're searching for something greater beyond their understanding like the origin of the universe. They've been studying humans because they have a special amount of aura in them, and by touching Isaac, they show him a vision of Jesus. Apparently they believe Jesus is the origin of everything because the humans with the most aura are his followers. Sarah takes the chance to ask why her arm always hurts since the abduction, causing the alien to take out a bracelet device that it puts around her arm. Suddenly her arm splits in two to reveal the tracker that the aliens put there, and now they take it back before making her arm looking normal again. Next they start working on Isaac's arm, but at that moment Graves and his agents arrive, blocking the road with their cars. Graves asks Carl to come out as he demands an explanation about what happened to his father, who was the lumberjack that died in the smashed truck and whose body disappeared. When Graves threatens to open fire, 
Carl finally comes out and explains he doesn't know what happened to his co-worker's body, which he already said in the past. Graves still doesn't believe him and makes his men shoot him down. Sarah immediately runs out to check on him, only to get shot as well. In the cabin, the aliens finish with Isaac's arm and give him some final advice, he should use his senses and focus. As the aliens disappear, Isaac concentrates and finally gets a grip of his power, allowing him to become invisible and pick up Sarah while the agents open fire on the cabin. Then Isaac picks up Carl and Zed as well, keeping them in the invisible realm where they meet with the aliens again. The creatures immediately heal Sarah and Carl while Zed enters the cabin only to find it empty. While all the agents are confused, the group follows the aliens on the road, walking among the men without being noticed. Soon the spaceship is seen leaving the planet. Six months later, Sarah and Isaac are a couple living a quiet life in Costa Rica. Isaac still has his power and sometimes uses it at work to do things faster. Zed and Carl are working together for Zuma, a new underground tech intelligence agency, and Graves gets fired from his job for taking things too far.